Hello and welcome to the Practice Within Podcast. I am your host, Amanda L. And today we are talking all about marathon stuff. So I'm not going to give a full recap of the marathon on this episode because I want to break that all down with my husband on our uh, joint podcast, the Holy Health Podcast. That will be out on Thursday. So once it's out, I will link it down below. Until then, just hang on until Thursday and you can listen to the full recap. But today I'm going to take the marathon conversation in a little bit of a different direction than what we are talking about over there. But before that, last week I shared some books that I was reading prior to diving into the episode. I'm going to do that again today. So I mentioned last week that I was reading Paris Hilton's memoir. Whoa. Um, (laughs) I was reading Paris Hilton's memoir and it is so good. It is like, it's so good. I've loved her forever. Like I've always been a fan of hers, but this book was just like next level amazing. And so I definitely recommend that one. After that, I started reading The Midnight Library. And I think it's a relatively popular book, but I've been waiting to get it on my uh, my library card, I guess. Kindle, my Kindle downloads. I don't know what you call that. But um, I've been waiting to do that on there. I finally got it. And I'm... I'm obsessed. I'm halfway through and it is so good so far. It is such a cool book. It's so different and I really like it so far. So next week I will give you the full recap of that, but if you have been thinking about reading Paris Hilton's book or if you haven't been thinking about it and you're just interested in it, it is definitely worth it. Um, Okay, so other than that, we're going to dive right into marathon stuff because that has been the talk of my life for basically the past five months, but really the past month. I have been so nervous. I was so nervous this past week, especially like Friday and Saturday, that I just, I haven't been that nervous in a really long time. I don't remember the last time I was that nervous and what I was that nervous about, but oh, I was nervous. (laughs) I was so nervous. Um, Basically, the recap here is I finished the marathon, Mitch finished the marathon, and it was way harder than we expected. It was not the course that we thought we were signing up for, and there were a lot of hills, and we didn't find this out until we were standing at the start line getting ready to start. And I'm so glad that I did not know that the course changed until I was standing at the start line because... I, it would have just made me even more nervous and would have just been one more thing to worry about. And to sum it up, it was horrible. It was absolutely horrible. The, the race was terrible. <laughs> I was in so much pain. Uh, everything hurt. Like to the point where I have humongous blisters on my feet and I had no idea that I had these huge blisters because everything else hurt so much too. So it was like, I didn't even recognize the things that were actually blistering or rubbing or anything like that because just everything was hurting. And so I finished and I, well, even prior to finishing, but like just in general, I was like, I'm never doing this again. I'm one and done. It's just a bucket list thing. You guys heard me talk about it last week. If you haven't heard that episode, go back and listen to it and then listen to this one because I'm sure it's hilarious to like compare the two. So much can change in a week. You just, you never know. But uh, so I was very much like, never again, one and done. This sucks. And right after the marathon, I was the same way. I was like, yeah, no, I hurt so much. No way. And then that evening, I I was like, well, I'm really disappointed that I had to run such a hilly race when I thought it was a flat race. And I, I was five minutes over my goal time, quote unquote, because like my goal was just to finish, but I did have a goal time in mind. I was five minutes over, which I'm totally good with because of the fact of 
the the course of the race. But um, I was like, I'm kind of disappointed that I didn't get to run this this ideal race that I had in my mind because they changed the course and I didn't know about it. And what do you know? They have a, a different marathon in September on the course that I wanted to do. So we signed up last night. So <laughs> like 24 hours after finishing the marathon, we signed up for another one after saying, yeah, we're not doing that. And I think my biggest takeaway from this whole marathon thing is just the the concept of continuously getting outside of your comfort zone and really pushing yourself so it doesn't even have to be physically pushing yourself but just getting into that state of like nervousness and adrenaline and like I am taking myself to a new level I am like seeing how far I can go this is like something that I think I can do, I hope I can do, but like, I don't actually know if I can do it because it is so far beyond what I've done before. Like I've run 13.1 miles before, but I haven't run 26.2 miles. And that's quite the jump between those two because every single thing from 13 miles on was something that I haven't done before. And so I was putting myself into such an unknown experience and just that thought alone was absolutely terrifying. And there was so much goodness in that. There was so much goodness in all of that. And I think that was my biggest takeaway and I think that's why I'm doing it again because like like I said, it was horrible. I did not have fun. I... <laughs> I I mean, the first, so I'm making a YouTube video. The YouTube video will be out, I believe, on Friday. And I actually filmed myself during the marathon. I filmed myself every three miles, approximately. And, like, what I was thinking and, like, how it was going and all of this. And so you can watch, like, the real-time footage of me struggling through it. But, like, I... <laughs> I just, it was so horrible, but also amazing. And like, it was such a sense of accomplishment. And that is something that I want to continue to strive for. And I'm sure I will feel that in this upcoming marathon that we scheduled for in September. But I'm also exploring different areas that I can put this in as well. Like, where else can I put myself into like a state of like, Ooh, like there's so much on the line. Like I could fail at this. This is something I could fail at because a lot of times we sit in the seat of comfort and we like it there, of course. Like it makes total sense why we would like it in the seat of comfort. I have been doing it for a couple of years now and doing this marathon has brought me outside of that. And I just like have this reignited perspective on life and growth and capabilities and possibilities in life and so we sit in the seat of failure or seat of comfort and not in the seat of potential failure and you can live a good life from the seat of comfort but like I'm not looking just for an average life I'm looking for I want to do things I want to live I want to truly live I wrote a sub stack about that I will link it down below. I don't remember what it's called, but something like about living. Are you living your life or are you just living? And I talk about that a lot, but actually doing this marathon was the first thing that really put me out of that comfort zone because I've done 75 hard and I've finished the live hard year and I've done all of these different things, but they are just so different compared to something like this. I mean, they're just they're just different and they're both great and they're both very valuable. And there are a lot of areas in life that you can get similar experiences and take similar things away from depending on who you are and what you like and all of that. But I just think really exploring the aspect of taking yourself out of the seat of comfort and putting yourself into the seat of potential failure and just seeing, seeing where that can take you because 
you never know. Like I, I truly thought I was one and done. I was crossing this off my list. It's not even a goal of mine anymore. And I still stand by everything that I said in that podcast episode because that was exactly where I was at in life. And that marathon really wasn't my current self in that time's goal. But this future marathon is my present self's goal. So it was like I was pursuing a goal for my past self. I was pursuing a bucket list goal that I always wanted to do in the past. I was pursuing that in the in the present day of last week and the weeks prior to that without really wanting to do the marathon. Like I didn't really have any desires. But in that pursuit of going after that for my past self, sparked something within my my current self, my present day self right here right now that really desires to do another marathon. So it's like I was pursuing something for my past self that I didn't want to do and now I'm doing the same exact thing I didn't want to do for my current self, just in a different way. Same, same, but different. And it's just so interesting because you never know where stuff like that will take you. You never know where these goals that you've always had on your bucket list, you never know where these goals that are someday goals will take you. And I think that's so beautiful if we act upon them. And so it's like getting ourselves to act upon them. How can you get from someday bucket list, seat of comfort into actually pursuing those things? That is like, there is a huge gap that needs to be bridged between those two things for a lot of people, including myself, including everybody in some way, shape or form. And sitting with that, I don't think there is one answer and I really think it depends on what you're pursuing, but just sitting with that and exploring the potential of what that looks like. So for me, I'm thinking like, okay, what other goals do I have? And a lot of them are physical goals right now, which I think I'm just having a lot of fun with physical goals personally, because basically from 2021 to the beginning or 2020 ish to 2023, the beginning of this year, I struggled with my physical body immensely. And I'm not sitting here at the picture of health right now, by any stretch of the imagination, I still have I currently have one issue that like I really am not having fun with <laughs> but uh, generally speaking I'm relatively healthy at this point in time I'm capable of running marathons I'm capable of working out I'm capable of doing all of these physical activities and that was with a lot of work especially on my mindset and something that I need to continuously come back to because Everything's always changing. Our perspectives, our views, our information that we have, the education that we um, have, everything is changing. And with that, everything changes. I mean, it's just, it's that simple. It's like, okay, so in January, I believed a certain set of things that was so aligned with that time period of my life. And now in July, almost August, my perspectives and my views have changed based off of the experiences that I have had over the past seven months. And there's nothing wrong with that. I think, I mean, we should always be changing and growing and transforming our perspectives, our opinions, ourselves as a whole. But giving ourselves some grace with that and recognizing like, okay, so I believed one thing in January and I was like truly, really in a good space with my health. And now I believe something slightly different and I am not exactly in the same space with my health. Um, and really just accepting that and trusting that you have all of the information that you need in this time and you're exactly where you need to be because Right now, like I have been slightly panicked about this health circumstance that I have happening, which is not unusual. I am slightly panicked about <laughs> most health circumstances. 
other than the past six months when I wasn't, but that's a whole other story. Um, but generally speaking, I have been in the past very health anxious and obsessive. And so I found this to reemerge this month. And it's like I said, it's not something that I have experienced for like the past six plus months which was so good, but my perspective and my views and my mindset has changed at this point in time in my life. And I attribute that to the shift in my, my mental state. So with that, it's like, okay, so I'm in a different space and it's not exactly one that I'm thriving in, in a certain way. What can I do to get out of it? And I think the marathon was so expansive for me personally because it was like, okay, like I have this health issue happening, but I can run a marathon. I finished the marathon. I did the thing. I did the big thing that I set out to do. And just looking at things like that in your life, it's like, okay, thinking back to all of the other health issues that I've had in the past, like I have overcome those. I have moved through those and really settling into a belief that you will overcome and move through the current circumstance too. And like just trusting that is so difficult, but it is the key. I, I know it to be true. It is the key to making strides with these tricky health struggles that we experience. And I, I'm just, I'm working through it just like everybody else. Um, one thing that I've been doing lately too is reading stories of other people with a similar problem that I'm experiencing and how they've healed it natu naturally. And just taking time in my days to, this sounds like really stupid, but taking time in my days to recognize my power and my connection because for, I don't know, for the past period of time, let's say, I have really not been feeling super spiritually connected. And that's another, like, it's never just one thing. Like I always say, people are like, what about this? And I'm like, well, it depends because there's never just one thing. I also think this is a contributing factor to the current health struggle that I have. The fact that I am not as spiritually connected as I typically am, let's say. And that's a whole other story for a whole other podcast that I'm sure will come out in the future at some point. But not having that spiritual connection, whatever that looks like for you, is so limiting and what you can perceive and believe to be possible in your healing journey. And so it's like, how can you come back to that? If you have been feeling spiritually disconnected in whatever way, for whatever reason, how can you come back to that connection in some way? So for me, I've been pulling cards. I have like some card decks and I've been pulling those and really like sitting with whatever the card is that I pulled um, I've been journaling every day still and I've been just like really intentional with that. I've been, like I said, reading stories of people who have been experiencing similar things with me that have had cool healings, I will say, uh, with different modalities that they've been using to heal and just creating space. So I talk about this a lot. I talk about it a lot because I need to hear it a lot. I'm sure there are other people out there who need to hear it a lot too, but creating space. So maybe that's like taking a day off of work or maybe that's rearranging your schedule and taking an afternoon off. This morning I went and got a massage. I haven't got a massage since 2018, I think. And it was something I scheduled intentionally to get done after the marathon as like a little treat something to look forward to and uh, like I so I left the massage and I'm driving through the city I'm driving like to uh, Whole Foods through the city lots of traffic the whole thing and I just like recognized how calm I was 
I was like, wow, I am, I am calm. And I don't remember the last time that I actually felt this calm. And then I recognized that that's a problem, that I do not feel calm basically ever. There's always something to do. There's always a box to check. There's always a list to tackle. There's always this, there's always that. There's always things. What's the next thing? We're going to the next thing. Here's the next thing and the next thing and the next thing. And I recognize that like, I don't feel calm anymore. And I don't think I felt calm probably since 2019 at some point because in 2020 my life exploded and it just kept exploding and now in 2023 I am reeling it back in and I'm getting to a space where I can like finally work on the things that I kind of left in 2019 because then all of these other things popped up in 2020 to 2022 that I like had to put out those fires before I could go back to what I was doing prior to that. And so I'm like, wow, I have not felt calm since probably 2019. And that's not okay. (laughs) It's just not okay. And so there's a lot of work to do in that. And it is going to look a lot of different ways and I will share. But it was really enlightening to me, like, The massage was great. It was awesome. Like I'm planning to do another one after my next marathon in September. So it was great. But what was really great was the after effects, the, the feeling and the, the, uh, recognition of the fact that I have not felt calm. And And then taking that and thinking like, how can I bring this into my daily life? How can I bring more calm and more space and more ease into my life? So I already started. I was scheduled. I scheduled myself to work for like three hours today. And this, I don't consider this to be work sitting here and creating a podcast. I don't really consider that to be too much work compared to like actual work. So I rescheduled my work day because I thankfully have the ability, I can work whenever I want, I can create my own schedule, I can change it literally at the last minute. So I did that and I chose to do some other things today and to really create that space in my schedule because when I manifested my job, when I brought that into my reality, I did that because I wanted freedom and I wanted flexibility in my schedule. That was one of my main goals. And when I started my job, like I, that was, that was the thing. I was like, I can work whenever I want. I can change my schedule. I can do all of these things. And it's so easy to just get stuck in. Like I have to do it right now because I schedule myself to do it right now. Or I have to do this. I have to do that. I just want to get it done, this, that, whatever. I'm just going to power through. It's so easy to get into all of that mindset. And sometimes that is totally necessary. For sure, there are times when that is absolutely needed. But today, that was not needed. I could easily throw those hours later into the week into another time that works quite well to uh, work as well. (laughs) Works quite well to work as well. And so that's what I did. And I'm, I'm starting to do that. And just the key is consistency with this because it's so easy to like, it's like when you're, when it's New Year's Eve and you're like, I'm going to write down 12 New Year's resolutions. and I'm like going to do them all and I'm going to change my entire life. And yeah. And then it's January 20th and you lost them all. You just you quit them all. And it's so easy to do that with the, the space making or the goals in this way too. It's like, okay, I'm running a marathon in September, but I'm also really interested in pursuing space and relaxation and time to decompress, time to really feel calm, centered, and present. And I don't really like or believe in balance but balancing all of that and really 
just incorporating it into your day, into your week, into your life. And a lot of times that looks like removing some things. I would remove social media first personally because like what a time suck unless you're just unless you're posting or creating content to post but if you're just scrolling I think that's a great thing to eliminate first if you're looking to create more space in your life you're looking to do a big goal and need a lot of time for it take out social media first um but I think it's so easy to fall off of fall off the wagon with all of that and it's just coming back to that every day and re remaining fierce in your goals in your boundaries and in your uh, line of vision is the life that you want so it's like okay like I really want to go out tomorrow night because like everybody's gonna be there and I'm gonna miss out and the whole thing but the next day I have a big training run for my marathon and I know if I go out I'm not gonna do the run and it's like focusing on your goals, focusing on the greater picture, focusing on creating more calm in your life, creating more space in your life, creating more whatever it is in your life and revisiting that every single day so that it is top of mind and it is made to be a priority. That is how you get where you want to go. You just keep doing the same thing over and over and over again probably in slightly different ways. It's going to look a little different, but in general, keeping things consistent, having consistent ideas of what you are pursuing, what you're creating in life. Running a marathon, I need to get out and I need to run X amount of miles, X amount of times per week. Creating space and calm in my life, I need to carve out and schedule into my days some space to be calm some space to decompress, some space that I can just have the space and just keep showing up and doing that. And some days that could look like laying on the bed for 20 minutes and just like laying there. Other days that could look like sitting outside and journaling. I mean, it can just, it's the same thing, but you're doing different things. So I'm like, okay, I'm creating a sense of calm. How am I doing that today? What feels best? Checking in and pursuing that. And then before you know it, you're going to you're going to create amazing things in your life. You're going to look back and be like, I ran a marathon. I seriously ran a marathon. Me? I ran a marathon. Last year I couldn't even work out without getting sick. I ran three times in July before I ran this marathon. I ran seven miles, I ran eight miles, and I ran 13 miles. Before that, I didn't, I haven't ran since April. I didn't run for two months. Then I ran three times and I ran a marathon. A very hard marathon at that. Everything is possible. You are capable of doing so much more than you believe you just have to be able to remove yourself from that seat of comfort and put yourself in that seat of potential failure and potential possibility because that's what it is. We see, we see it as the seat of failure. What if I fail? What if I don't finish? What if I'm last? What if I, whatever. But within that seat of failure, there's also the potential, the potential for growth, expansion, Everything that you want in life, the next level is in that seat of failure as we perceive it. That's where it's at. And putting yourself in that space as much as possible. Because, okay, maybe I could have shown up to the marathon and not finished. That would have, that would have put me in a position, I guarantee it, where I would have wanted to do another one. And I'm doing another one anyways. But like, if I wouldn't have finished, I would have been like, okay, well, I got to do another one so that I can finish this thing. I can do one of these because I am so close. I was so close. I got to get there. And it's just like recognizing that you could fail, but also recognizing that if you do fail, that you can most likely pursue it again or pursue something similar or learn something extremely valuable from that experience 
that you can then take into a new goal, a new experience. So setting yourself in the seat of failure slash potential instead of the seat of comfort. And just like, then you'll wake up one day, a random Monday in July and be like, well, two days ago, I ran a marathon. That is like, that is crazy. Looking back on everything that I've been through in the past three years, that is crazy. But it's possible and it happened and I did it. And that is taking me higher and higher and higher and higher and higher to places that I don't even dream of or know about yet. But each each level stacks upon each other and we go up, 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 up if we allow ourselves to do things that we will potentially fail at instead of sitting in that seat of comfort and um, familiarity. So with that, check out the Holy Health Podcast this Thursday. If you're listening to this after Thursday, then the link is down below. You can check that out where we go in depth on the marathon, Mitch and I both. We're going to share our stories. We're going to share the experience. We're going to share all of it and talk a little more about the future marathon that we're doing too, which is like, it's so crazy to even say, but we're going to talk about all of that on the Holy Health Podcast. So check that one out. Um, This is the final week to work one-on-one with me in this current offering and setting. If you have been thinking about working together, link is down below. Set up a free consultation. We can chat for 30 minutes. You can ask me any questions. I can tell you everything that uh, you can expect from working with me and we can see if we're a good fit. After this, one-on-one offerings will be going away for... I don't want to say forever, but for the foreseeable future from me personally. So get in on that now if you have been on the fence with that. YouTube, I'm I'm doing it on YouTube. We're doing the YouTube thing. So that is also down below. Like I said, this coming Friday, there will be the marathon video. Last week I did a hiking video. It was a Tennessee hiking video. It's a good one. Pretty views. Awesome, especially if you are heading to Tennessee anytime in the near future. I'll be on Instagram someday. That link down is down below too, but today is not that day. Tomorrow's not going to be that day either, but sometime in the future, I will be there. So if you want to get me on Instagram so you can be there when I do start posting, check that out as well. Leave a rating, a review, share the show for anybody that needs to hear it. All of that is so helpful and greatly appreciated. And with that, I will talk to you next week. Bye.